uh, quick tutorial on installing uh, Open Daylight. So it's been released. Uh, so I'm just going to buzz through it here real quick. Install dependencies. Uh, this is on Ubuntu 12.4. It'll run fine on 12.10 also. Okay, once you have all that installed, go ahead and pull down the clone. Uh, so the repository is at the Open Daylight org site. Uh, just git clone and then that uh, controller.git. CD into controller open daylight distribution open daylight. Uh, next thing we're going to do is run Maven clean install. So it's going to take a few to compile here. And so this will run for about five or ten minutes. I'm going to pause and we'll pick back up when it gets done. Uh, quick tutorial on installing uh, Open Daylight. So it's been released. Uh, so I'm just going to buzz through it here real quick. Install dependencies. Uh, this is on Ubuntu 12.4. It'll run fine on 12.10 also. Okay, once you have all that installed, go ahead and pull down the clone. Uh, so the repository is at the Open Daylight org site. Uh, just git clone and then that uh, controller.git. CD into controller Open Daylight distribution Open Daylight. Uh, next thing we're going to do is run Maven clean install. So it's going to take a few to compile here. And so this will run for about five or ten minutes. I'm going to pause and we'll pick back up when it gets done. Okay, now let's go ahead and open up a web browser. Uh, I'm going to run the web browser from the controller itself, so I'm just going to point it to 127.001. Uh, you can get to it off box, just you know that uh, port 80 is binding to any address, so that socket's good on any of the addresses. Uh, log in with admin as a username, admin as a password. And here is Open Daylight in all of its glory. Uh, so something I'm using to use as a soft switch that anybody can use is something called Mininet, M-I-N-I-N-T. Uh, it'll be with the, uh, in the instructions for this to where to download it. Uh, it's just a little ISO, so you'll spin it up in whatever your hypervisor is, and you're going to attach it to a controller. It emulates out of the box two hosts, so we're going to go in and create. Uh, first, let's add the switch. Let's give it a name. And we'll say allow reactive. Now with reactive, don't get that confused with uh, learning and flooding and uh, Ethernet switching. So all that's saying is uh, you can send packets to the controller. Uh, once they get to the controller, they still need some kind of forwarding logic. Uh, so as you can see there, we don't have anything. We need to do a ping all. So what we're going to do is add a rule to point from port 1 to port 2. So add your input port of port 1. And where are we? So here are all the options. Sorry, this is the first time I'm looking at it. Add output port. Um, our output port will be port 2. Everything else you want to leave blank. Uh, ether type, so we want to take that out. So what that's matching on is unicast IPv4. Uh, in order for these two machines to talk to each other, they also need to exchange, uh, uh, they need to be able to send an ARP broadcast for a request and then an ARP unicast reply, which would be an 806 ether type. So we just want all traffic garbage in and garbage out to these two ports. So we need to set up the, since this is, we need to make the synchronous, we need to set up the return flow. So we'll pick the opposite port and send it back out uh, the add output port and it should be port 1. 
So we're setting up a flow from port 1 to port 2, all traffic to forward, and then we're setting up a flow from port 2 to port 1, all traffic to flow. Now we'll do this ping all. So notice the two hosts are now able to reach each other. So you're looking at this the first time with me. So we've got flows. Uh, there's our flow details. So notice we're wildcarding everything. So we're saying match anything and send it out. It looks like we have a devices tab that's also got a subnet gateway. So if I was to speculate, uh, that should be doing some kind of uh, ARP uh, proxying so that uh, floods can get uh, um, Ethernet flooding can get snuffed out and broadcast is controlled between the two. So again, this is Mininet, this is Open Daylight, this is really cool, get in, start using it. Uh, I'm using uh, VM Fusion to do this, so you can use uh, VirtualBox, it's free. Thanks. So that looks like Open Daylight. Um, keep in mind that uh, you, you won't be doing static flows for everything. This is just uh, this is nice for learning. It's also going to be really beneficial to start peeling off uh, early use case application and then allowing the rest of the traffic to flow uh, more than likely using some kind of hybrid technique. So thanks. You can find me at networkstatic.net. I'll have a post with instructions on this in the video there and on the Twitters at networkstatic and um, blog at packetpushers also. Thanks.